Hello everyone. Today's video segues off of my previous video about VTech a little bit, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Today, I'd like to talk about the Honda R18 engine. Now we all know about the K20s and the B16s and all the great engines Honda has produced over time, but instead of focusing on one of those, I'd like to take a deeper dive into an engine that nobody has ever really cared about, the R-Series. Why, you may ask, and to be honest, it's really just because I wanted to. So here we go. Starting right off, the R18 is a 1.8 liter single overhead cam, 4 cylinder, 16 valve engine that has a red line at 6,800 RPM and makes a total of 140 horsepower at 6,300 RPM and 128 pound feet of torque at 4,300 RPM. Its primary usage has been seen in non SI Honda Civics from 2006 to 2015 in the North American market although it has also been used in a few other cars in different markets, such as the 2008-2015 to Honda City. The engine was designed to be practical, reliable, and efficient, with Honda claiming that it has, quote, performance similar to a 2-liter engine, and fuel economy similar to that of a 1.5-liter engine. Honda focused on giving the R18 both low RPM torque and top-end power, but don't be fooled by those automotive buzzwords, this isn't a sporty engine. It's a very capable, economy-focused engine. Some highlights of the R18 are as follows. A high-rigidity aluminum block with low friction internal components. iVTEC intelligent valve control system. A composite dual-stage intake manifold. A drive-by-wire throttle controller. And a programmed fuel injection system. In addition, the R18 has an estimated EPA fuel economy rating of 30 city 40 highway for the automatic transmission a 30 city 38 highway for the manual, and it's classified as an ultra low emissions vehicle or LEV2. Let's run through a couple of those specs in more detail. So, as I mentioned, the R18 has a very compact all aluminum block. This makes it very structurally sound and allows it to have better power to weight ratio when compared to previous Honda engines. Honda used some trickery involving the machining processes used on the cylinder sleeves to reduce friction in the engine, which helps with vibrations and allows the engine to make more power. More well, power, baby! In addition, Honda uses a super stiff steel crankshaft with a high balance ratio that's placed low in the block, which allows the engine to be more robust, smooth, and compact. To further increase the structural rigidity of the R18's engine components and to reduce weight, Honda chose to use cracked steel connecting rods rather than the conventional manufacturing processes. Now having cracked connecting rods might sound like a horrible engine failure, but in fact this process of manufacturing creates stronger and lighter rods than conventional methods. Essentially, rather than forging rod and cap as separate components and then joining them together with a pin, Honda forges both components together as one then cracks them apart so that when they are joined back together, the surfaces that are touching are uneven. This eliminates the need for a pin because the bolts can be precision machined to fit the cap to the rod. According to Honda, quote, the end result is a connecting rod that is 13% lighter and has a 20% smaller cross section, resulting in less rotating mass inside the engine and less space occupied by the connecting rod. Now here's the interesting bit. You probably heard me mention Ivy Tech at the beginning of this video. Well, the R18 has that, but it's a little different. If you want a refresher on how VTEC works, you can go back and watch the video I made recently which should clear things up. Now one thing I didn't mention in the VTEC video is that there are actually a few distinct forms of iVTEC. The variant I talked about is used in engines like the K20 to increase power at high RPM, but there's a second variant found in Honda engines that focus more on economy. This second variant essentially operates like an inverse form of normal iVTEC. Essentially, between 1,000 and 3,500 RPM, a set of cams is used which closes one of the intake valves and slows that valve's timing. This forces back pressure against the incoming air and fuel mixture, which decreases the air intake volume. Everything involved is a little difficult to explain, but I provided links to additional material in the description, where you can read more about this from VTEC if you so choose. So unfortunately, the R18 does not use performance IV tech, but the engine does stop depriving itself of power at 3,500 RPM, which means you're able to wring all 140 horsepower out of the R18 if you rev it up enough. Some people will call this fake VTEC, and in a way it is, but it still allows the R18 to be more versatile and powerful than it would have been otherwise, and it's still pretty cool. To go slightly more in depth on the composite intake, Honda simply used composite resin in its construction rather than aluminum to save weight. In addition, above 5,200 RPM, two additional intake runners open for each cylinder, which boosts top-end power. 
So while the cams might not have performance VTEC, the air intake makes up for some of that with a similar system, at least in principle. Again, I provided some more information on the R18 in the description that you can read up on if you so choose, but for now we're moving on to my thoughts on the R18. So this isn't a performance engine, but it does have some appealing attributes from an enthusiast's perspective. The durable all aluminum block, the steel cracked pistons, the balanced camshaft or whatever, sounds like the makings of a supercar killer. And while all of those things are pretty neat, How neat is that? They don't really add up to anything of value, especially when you're only talking about a 1.8 liter. No replacement for displacement. Mm, yeah. Muscle things. Mm. Energy. I've heard some people say on forums that they were going to go for like 400 horsepower on these things, but it sounds like no one's actually been able to make over 200. Obviously, that's on a boosted motor, and I doubt they lasted very long. These blocks might be strong, but I seriously doubt they're up for handling like more than 180 horse. But I'm not an expert, of course. It seems like Honda just had one goal with making this thing, and that was to build a well-rounded engine, which means over-engineering it just enough to meet Honda standards. Like, we're not talking about a 2JZ or anything crazy here. Admittedly, the R18 doesn't feel horrible. I mean, you can rev them out, and while the red line is low for a Honda, they're still pretty fun. You can get some wheel spin out of them, they sound like every other Honda, and they'll make you smile, as long as you don't look at the Speedo. But, like, if you want power and that good Honda feel, just buy an SI or get the K20 or maybe even K-Swap one, but I don't think there's really a point to even doing that. Like, don't try to build this motor. You're going to sink 5k into it, you're going to get the turbo, you're going to get or maybe a supercharger, you're going to get an intake, exhaust, tune, etc, whatever, and you're going to only come out with like 200 max horsepower and an engine that desperately wants to die. It, it will never be worth it. To do anything with this. So in conclusion, the R18 is an engine. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video. Go watch my other content if this was pretty solid. Uh, consider liking this if you liked this, and drop a sub if you want to be able to watch more stuff along these lines. Only one of you can hold the honor of being my 69th subscriber. Act with haste, my friends. See you in the next video. I hope this was enjoyable. This one was a little bit weird, but uh, yeah, see ya.